One Punch Man and Mob Psycho 100. They're created by the same mangaka, and of course, they have a lot of similarities. Even beyond the surface level comparisons, there's a lot of deeper, thematic crossover, and I want to highlight that today. They also do a lot of stuff differently. Looking at the differences and similarities between the two series not only teaches us more about the series, but it can even teach us more about one as an author, how he grew, changed, and developed over time between the two series. One Punch Man is a great series, and there's still a lot of clear inspiration from that series in Mob Psycho 100. With that being said, there's still a lot of very prominent comparisons to be made. I mean, he did create the series himself, he's really just copying himself. I actually made a similar video series on Togashi's work and discussing the differences between Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter x Hunter. So, go watch that after this. I know you nerds have nothing better to do. It's in the cards right now, just like, right click it and put it in another tab. One of the core differences between One Punch Man and Mob Psycho 100 that is immediately present is the way they tell their story. One Punch Man was really a story that was created for fun. The formula gets repetitive at times, and the art style wasn't originally the best. Mob Psycho, which was what he developed later in life, takes a much more sophisticated approach. With One Punch Man, you never really find yourself worried or really feeling any tension when watching. This is part of the appeal of One Punch Man, but with Mob Psycho 100, there's a lot of plot twists and narrative beats providing actual tension. When One was writing One Punch Man, he was just a regular dude writing comics on his free time. It was just a story he created for fun. One Punch Man eventually became really popular. After his success with One Punch Man, he started another series called Mob Psycho 100. For this, writing wasn't just a hobby for him, it was a full-time job. He could fully flesh out his ideas in his new series. In Mob Psycho 100, the art stepped up and the story became a little bit more conventional while still being powerful in its own way. The tone of the story moved from a parody comedy to an emotional narrative. Both Mob Psycho and One Punch Man make fun of conventional shonen tropes by hyping up the villain only to comically slaughter them in the end. With One Punch Man, it ends with One Punch, and in Mob Psycho, it ends with Mob exercising the evil spirit. In the beginning, they were both very Monster of the Week-esque, but quickly moved past that. Both Mob and Saitama are dead expression, overpowered protagonists. This forces the shows to focus more on the mental state of the characters over the question of whether or not they will win. This shifts the appeal from action to the more slice-of-life mundane aspects of their life. Mob wants to improve his body and gain the confidence and charisma to ask out his crush. Saitama wants to feel struggle, so he enjoys playing video games with King. Instead of having battles be the main focus, it becomes the internal mental needs that get more attention. It also means that a lot of their character development is divorced from combat development. What I mean is that while Mob and Saitama do grow mentally, they never grow physically stronger. The action pieces are almost used to advertise the show to you, and then it's the psychological and mental journey that keeps you glued. In a medium that is meant to escape from reality, it's ironically reality that will eventually become the appeal. In One Punch Man, Saitama feels nothing because he doesn't really have any emotions. In Mob Psycho 100, Mob has to contain all of his emotions, which makes him appear blank, but he really does feel every emotion. They're just bottled up and only come out when the time is appropriate. How Mob and Saitama view their powers is somewhat different. Saitama got his powers through hard work and determination, only to get there and become bored. Mob was born with all of his powers, but realizes that they don't actually mean anything at the end of the day when it comes to his day-to-day -day problems. They don't help him to actually be a better person. Nothing he finds worthwhile comes from his powers. Mob is a middle school kid learning to grow up, and Saitama is already an adult trying to find meaning in his mundane life. Both camps preach that overwhelming power isn't the key to happiness. In Mob's case, it's being a well-rounded person. In Saitama's case, it's finding challenge and something to strive for. At the end of the day, infinite power seems fun, but it quickly becomes dull and uninteresting. Mob sees his power as something that shouldn't define him. While I wouldn't go as far as to say that Saitama is defined by his power, 
He is much more allured by action, fighting, and heroics than Mob is. Mob's fights are often energetic battles of mind and morality that escalate way further than Mob wants them to. Whereas Saitama's are just a past time, he's bored, and they never get attention. Mob doesn't want to fight, Saitama wants to fight the ultimate opponent. Saitama uses his power purely to fight, whereas Mob uses them for routine, day-to-day -day tasks or exercise spirits rather than using them as a weapon. The fights in the two shows are extremely different too. One Punch Man fights are mostly gags, but mobs carry much more emotion in them. Just take for example Mob vs. Teru. This fight is already visually stunning, but what makes it so memorable is how Teru and Mob's different ideologies clash. Teru believes that he should stand on top of everyone because he believes that he is special as he has psychic powers. So when he comes in contact with another psychic user, and this one doesn't have the same god complex, he doesn't understand it. He gets angry at Mob for not using his psychic powers, so he brings the fight to the physical realm. When Mob mentions how his psychic powers don't mean much, it was an attack not only on him as an esper, but him as a person. He based his entire identity on the fact that he was an esper and no one else was. It's symbolic how it wasn't his psychic powers that hurt Mob, but his physical power. Something he put no stock into. Essentially, anyone could have done what he did. He's not special. When he gets blasted into the sky, suspended into the air in his most vulnerable state, being literally naked, he's forced to acknowledge his insignificance in the grand universe. This is a sort of common theme in Mob. It's the idea of entitlement and narcissism and how each villain becomes humbled. They can't see the world outside their window because they're too busy whispering sweet nothings to their reflection in the glass. There's so much more to the world and to themselves than just their psychic powers. But they just can't see it. In One Punch Man, we do have the Moomin Rider events. Maybe a few select other ones, you could argue. Garo also looks like he might get some good character development. But the show is primarily meant to be a parody of conventional shonen, which is totally fine. It has some bombastic scenes which are great for the visuals, but Mob packs more into its fights than just what lays on the exterior. Not only are Mob's fights visually striking, but they're thematically rich. Again, there's a lot more emotion and meaning packed into them. The Saitama vs. Boros fight had some orgasmic visuals, but it wasn't really saying anything beyond that. Mob vs. Teru, as I deftly explained, is a visual treat in its own way, but was also highly emotive in a way not seen in One Punch Man. The fights are so much more than two dudes beating each other up. It's standing for your ideals and trying to reason with your enemy. This can even be communicated in the way that they actually fight in the series. The fights in One Punch Man are literally physical, as the fights in Mobs are almost completely psychic based. I'm not trying to say that Mob Psycho is better than One Punch Man per se, although I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I like Mob Psycho more than One Punch Man. But it's really to bring attention to the two different writing styles, and how they're trying to accomplish different things. Genos is like a typical shonen protagonist who is mentored by Saitama, who is the main character. Reagan, instead of being the mentee of the main character, is actually the mentor to the main character, and shares much more in common with Saitama, being a more easygoing and relaxed type of guy. Regan is also the opposite of Saitama in that where Saitama has all the power in the world, Regan has nothing. So much of nothing in fact, that he pretends he has everything. Saitama is pretty apathetic to being a mentor, and Mob is comparatively enthusiastic about being a mentee. That's it, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed, I probably will make more Mob videos in the future. I just think it's the most inspirational anime ever. I have another video on Mob if you want to check that out. Again, I made the same video for Togashi and his work on Hunter x Hunter and Yu Yu Hakusho. So yeah, right now would be the time to watch that video. Let me know if I missed anything, I'm only one person, I'm sure I've missed a couple of things. Maybe even a lot of things, who knows. Thank you for watching the video, alright, peace.